gathered here in Hollywood, Florida, having arrived after our passage down the ICW, where we left from Boca Raton, as you saw last time. We've begun the task of preparing to leave the U.S. and cruise elsewhere for the foreseeable future, which, besides provisioning, involves tackling boat projects. In our last episode, we removed one of our water tanks and replaced it with a fridge freezer. And now we're turning our attention to a different project, which we'll cover in two parts since it's a big one. Cue part one of Operation Install an Air Conditioner. So on one of the hottest days <laughs> that we've had so far, it's 10 a.m. and it's already 80 in the cabin and 80% humidity, we are starting the install of our AC. I wanted to show you guys. The boat's kind of a mess because we had to take all our tools out and all our stuff out. But the AC unit is gonna go in this closet. We have a double door so that we can like block off the beaver if we want to. So anyway, the closet's in there. That's where the AC is going. That is the AC unit. So we're gonna have a hose that's gonna go from our seacock through the bilge, come into here, and it's gonna pop out inside here. That's a little narrow though. I don't think I have any other choice but to cut a hole. I think it's gonna be a theme of today. I think it's gonna be a lot of holes drilled in that boat, which is not one of my favorite things to do. Um, it's always a little stressful putting more holes in the boat, but we don't have a conduit run that's big enough for this 5 8 hose. It's where this line is going through, and that hole is like underneath this floor. I'm gonna try to use a Dremel. Um, to widen the hole a little bit. It's, it's maybe the least aggressive. Um, not a lot of clearance, so I'm not too pleased about that, but maybe I can just kind of sneak it through. Um, so, here we go. So, that was a little bit of a mission, um, but we finally got the hose run through. It took me, what, it took an hour? So now we can start feeding it. Okay. Now I have to get from the seacock to the bilge where that hose is running into. I'm gonna have to drill a hole, a hole saw. Yeah, it's gonna be interesting. There's like this double layer, like there's, a, there's wood here for the cabinetry and a glass tabbing. And then there's like another piece here. So I'm hoping the hole saw is long enough to get through both layers. I think like, like down a little bit. I'm trying to figure out like where you gotta drill things. The seacock's here, so it's gotta be like there maybe. And it's gotta be the right height. I have to go through the tabbing. Like you see that, that's a tabbing right there. That's a fiberglass tabbing. Boats are all about trying to do things in really small spaces. So, okay. I think I'm okay. It's not fiber box. Yeah, it's, it's all tabbed. Come on, man. It's hard stuff, huh? And Bill is currently drilling the hole for the... Uh, the battery just died on the drill. The battery just died? Yeah. Oh, great. Not a boat project if your drill battery doesn't die while you're doing something. Right? I'm gonna show you like a power drill one of these days, huh? So I got through this like first layer of tabbing. There's more cabinetry here though. Okay. So I got a strong bolt. Pop this out. Going. I mean, this is actually a good amount of material, huh? Oh god, I like this out. This is always the hard part of the hole saws. Like one, two, three. What am I drilling into? So you can see the hose that we ran through there. Now coming back into the bilge. Here we get more slack. It's a little narrow. Got it in. Didn't film the very end because I actually helped push it through. We're sneaking it through the rest of the way here. The hole I just drilled. And now we have raw water at the seacock. 
something people might find interesting to you know if you've seen other boats. Our village is quite shallow. You see it's only, I don't know, five inches deep or something, six inches deep. Um, and that is because we have a shallow draft boat. And yeah. that's just the design. Um, because it's hard to have four foot two draft and like six one or six two or six, I think it's actually six four Peter Pedram. And it's actually the reason why uh, we've had some issues in passages with water coming up through the floorboards. There's no effort to go. We never filmed it, but um, in some of our earlier passages when we were healed for like seven straight days, uh, we would have water yeah, coming up it, through the floorboards, and that's just a design. Thing. Compromise, I guess you call it, right? For this boat. Yeah, um, they can't they can't sump itself out appropriately because it's so shallow or healed over for any long period of time. The water can't make its way into the deep base into the bilge pump. Like a deep draft boat would have more curve to it, yep. so it winds up coming up the floor, which sucks. Mm -hmm. This Y valve um, diverts the flow of seawater out of the raw water uh, or the seacock. And the reason we need this is because we're sharing uh, a seacock for our water maker and our air conditioning. So you can see this thing, there's an intake side, which I've labeled over here. Comes out the bottom, if you turn the valve, out the top. So it just doesn't let any back siphoning between the two loops of water that we are using. That's the installed uh, Y valve. Strainer is going to be shared for both appliances. And yeah, pretty sweet. So, you guys saw us get the, uh, the seawater run through the boat. Um, the next step is to get the shelf built in the closet. I'd like to get this air conditioner out of the center of the salon. This is where the shelf is going to go. The opening here is smaller than the width or length or anything of the unit. Yeah. Oh god. Dinner doesn't mess around. No, I feel like you'll have this in this. Another day on the Calico Skies. If man built it, man can take it apart. An Andy boyism. Yeah. So what we're doing is we're removing the trim pieces and we're gonna cut um, each side a little bigger. the support for a shelf then. And what's hard is that, as you can see, the hull is curved, uh, number one. Number two, we are listing a little bit to port. This is not 90 degrees. This is not 90 degrees. It's a trapezoid, is what it looks like. I'm trying to get these all level, and then I'm hoping that will help me determine at least the measurements here to here. Burning the midnight oil here. Let's try and get this thing in so we can take our salon back. So here's the starboard shelf. It's a little bit rough. Um, well, these cuts are actually good. This will be covered by grating though, so I'm not too worried about that. We're gonna have a T grate in here and the trim's all gonna be done. This is pretty solid though. Like once I have it all secured down, I think it's gonna be pretty good. Yeah. So I think we put this air conditioner away for the night though, which is really my goal. So tomorrow we'll have to come back and we have to do duct work, air electrical, plumbing, but <laughs> it's a start. Yeah.
Let's hope it fits. This is the hard part. This thing is heavy. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I think that's it for now, though. I mean, it ain't gonna go anywhere. I mean, I could just, I, so strap it down here. Here. Good job. That's a lot. In the process of running the wire goes in here, behind here, I'm up to this part here. Then I have to take it down through this cabinet here into the switch panel. <laughs> so the cable is now into the uh, electric box. A little chaotic in here. This is our AC main, so this is our hot. This is our neutral. And then this is the ground for the um, AC terminals, the green wires. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to split open this casing. The ground's going to go here, the green. Um, the white's going to go here or on the other side. There's open terminals here. And then the black's going to go here, but I have to put a switch uh, circuit breaker in between the two. And after you attach everything at this end, install the circuit breaker, it gets run yep, through, through, the through this back. Whole behind the cabinetry, yeah. this cabinetry, and then comes out with the big so right there. The AC is, I yeah, got that much. white pilot cord is. I got way too much wire, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> Better to get too much than too little. It's always good to have extra three steering cable. I don't have much of this on board. AC wiring, we don't have a lot of that, so it's good spare. Good spare. I found an open spot um, in a circuit board we don't use anymore. Um, this is our stereo cabling which we don't use this anymore um, because we have a big AC subwoofer. Mm. This is the breaker for the AC. I was having trouble finding spots. I'm gonna drill a hole here. Um, there's really just no good options. So I think I'm just gonna insert it in here and label it. And it connected like this across the three terminals to spread the positive load. Um, this is now gonna be an AC run going here. Like AC circuitry, not air conditioning, both. But So I'm gonna cut this piece of metal just to make my life a little bit easier. I'm gonna use the angle grinder. Hmm. Your favorite tool. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so these two DC circuits are now connected. Heat trick time. Yep. So this is the wire for our air conditioner. The green, which is ground, is going to the green terminal. The white, which is neutral, is going to a white block, which is this one, neutral, right, the side to side. And then the hot is wired, I'm jumping from the hot main across to the circuit breaker. And then this is going to the air conditioner from the circuit breaker. So this will be interrupted when it switches off. So that's kind of that. I'll have to clean up all this wiring and stuff, but yeah. I mean, so that means the wires are run. Mm -hmm. The next step would be to uh, uh, see if I have 120 volts at the leads. Ready? The hot's in there, the neutral. See 122 volts. AC? Yep. Ground, 122 volts AC. So this wire is live. So here's our raw water. You can see I have the shelf back off on the floor here. And the compressor out because my plan is to mount the electrical box and the pump underneath here. Electrical box, pump.
so we have the electric box mounted. Um, now I'm going to mount the water pump. Considerations. I get a nice straight run to the, from the water line. So here's the raw water coming. This hose is going to go in here. So I want it, it's going to come straight out of the wall, basically. Okay. Um, this is supposed to be pointing upward to alleviate uh, air bubbles. So this is going to this is the next tube is going to go from here up to the con compressor. And the water pump has to be below the water line. Yes, below the water line. <laughs> I'm out of hose. Really? Yeah. What do you mean out of hose? I bought 30 feet of it. I have the picture boasts 36 feet. How long could I possibly use? Something's missing. Maybe it's in our pile of crap upstairs. Yeah. It was a continuous length. <laughs> okay, I gotta put this bad boy up here. Okay, here comes some hose clamps. Okay. That thing will never come off. It's fucking What thing will never come off? That hose. I heard that before. I had to cut it off last time. I was out of hose, but I found this little narrow guy and it's attaching him with the hose clamp. Your light's on. I think this will work for now. Um, I actually like this better because it'll be easier to run to the bilge is thinner than this. Um, and this is for the condensation drain. Um, so it's not like under high pressure, it's just kind of dripping off the bottom of the pan when the air compressor condenses and then it just drains down to the bilge. So this should work for now. I have it run through to there. Um, so all the connections are in this box and ready to go. So my next step is to get the shelf back in and then the air conditioner mounted. Oh. I'm gonna have to go ahead and secure the shelf in, um, but I have all our connections now in the underneath compartment. You have the raw water, the hose for the condensation drain, the thermostat, and this is the return uh, return temperature sensor. What you got there? Oh, another project <laughs> I'm excited for, but this is the uh, new inverter charger. Okay. Santa Claus has dropped it off, AKA Brian. Um, never a dull moment around here. He had two like 14 foot spinnaker poles on the dinghy too, along with all this stuff. So yeah, we do the weirdest things out here. Yeah, and we're always like, this came to Brett's um, mailing address, which is Brian's brother. And then uh, we have stuff going to Papo Delos because we moved down the ICW. <laughs> I mean, look at this boat. <laughs> I have the jack in a box, so, the air conditioning duct that I can't like, get back in. Packages are coming in. Garbage has gone out. Is going. This is stuff that was in the closet that we've determined. Um, we can part with now that we don't have that closet space. What are you giving up there, honey? Is that your Irish sweater Irish that we sweater. sailed around with for five years? That never you've worn. Never worn. Yep, and some sea boots that I've seen that better Bill, days. Bill wanted to wear in Ireland, which we haven't gone to yet. We've determined that we'll just buy a new one when I get there. Sweater in Ireland. Yeah. So <laughs> when we get there someday. So I have some projects ahead of me today. <laughs> well, it's it's early. What is it? Thursday. Yeah, it's Thursday though. Which I, th is I think by Monday I'm all done. Scary. That's my goal. Okay. Join us next time when we complete the AC install and see what happens That's when we try running it off our lithium battery bank.